One of the good features about document databases is that they are very flexible, but it also makes them very hard to find the best way how to model your schema. And I remember when I started working with document databases, feeling overwhelmed when I had to actually model my schema before starting because there's just so many different ways to do it. And in today's video, I'm gonna be going over some guidelines when it comes to schema design for document databases and an example of how I would design my schema for a document database. Now just for some context, a document database is a type of NoSQL database where you can store your data with key value pairs and the value is a JSON-like object without any predefined schema. But essentially having the JSON-like data allows them to be very flexible and diverse when it comes to how you're going to store your data in the database. And in this video, I'm going to be focusing on DynamoDB only because that's what I have the most experience in, but most of them operate in a very similar way with very small minor details that are different between them. Document databases store the data in a key value pair of JSON object. You can read and write JSON objects to the database programmatically. For instance, a JSON object can easily describe a film set data with nested actors, genres, and ratings. I'm not really gonna focus on document databases, really. I imagine you already know what they are, how they work, if you've come to this video. But I really wanna focus on how you can model your schema to get the best out of these document databases. So you might be wondering, if the schema of the document database is very flexible, why plan it beforehand? Why not just change it on the fly? Well, there's a few things that you need to consider that basically boil down to defining your data access patterns. And I'll explain what that means in a minute. But the reason why I would plan my schema beforehand is to be prepared and plan ahead and to make sure that my database is scalable. And how you design your schema can really impact the scalability of the app. So the most important thing when it comes to document database schema design is to make sure that the data is structured in the way that your app is going to use it. Because it's flexible, you can go many different ways, but it's very important to understand how the app is going to access the data and make sure that the schema supports that that data access pattern. If you have two different apps about films, they can have a different schema structure based on how the app is accessing the data. If you have an app with a set of movies, actors, genres, and ratings, but the app is more focused on the actors, you need able to search the actors and find movies from the actors, then you're gonna model that differently to an app that focuses on the movie and the ratings and the genres, because those are two different ways to that they're gonna access the data. So they're basically two different approaches when it comes to having your objects in the database. You could have an embedded approach, which basically means you're going to embed all of the data inside of your objects. So if you go with a film example, you have a document of films and then inside you'll have an actor's object, which is going to have the data of the actors embedded inside. And then the other approach is referencing approach, which basically is instead of adding the whole object embedded into the parent object, you're going to reference the ID very similar to how relationship databases work. And both of these are correct. You could use either one based on how the app is going to access the data. Like if you go back to the two different film apps that I mentioned, if you have an app that focuses on the actors, and you want to be able to search the actors, and then find the movies from them, then you would want to have a database where you can store the objects of actors in order to be able to search for those actors. The actor object can have a films array with the film's IDs, or you can actually embed the films in there. And embedding also makes duplicate data sometimes. If you have, for example, an actor with many movies and a movie with many actors, then you might have duplication if you use the embedded approach, which is fine to an extent. Then if you have the other app that focuses on the movies, you can embed the actors inside of the, inside of the movie object because you don't really need to search for actors. You don't really need to access the actor's data directly. And even though there are no rules when it comes to designing a data document database schema, there are some guidelines of which approach to use depending on the type of relationship. For example, for one-to-one -one relationships, you can use a key value pair or an embedded approach. If it's only one actor to one movie, then you can have the key as the movie and then the value can be an object or if it's something simple, it can be a string. For example, the actor's name can be the name and the actual value. And these are one-to-one -one relationships. And the recommended approach here is the embedded approach. Then when you have one-to-few relationship, so if you have one movie with a few actors, usually it's not the case, but for the sake of this example, 
if you have one movie with a few actors, then better approach is still preferred here because there's only a few actors. Depending on the database you use, there's gonna be other constraints to think about, especially when it comes to the embedded approach. Basically, you have a size limit of document, and this is different depending on the database you use. For DynamoDB, I think it's 400 kilobytes. So the data you can store in one document is limited to the size of 400 kilobytes. So if you have a big array of like 100 different objects inside that can get very big, very fast, and you're gonna reach that limit. Yeah, then we have one to many relationships. Because of that size limit, the preferred approach here is referencing, because if you have many, many objects, you can't really put them in array, you're gonna reach that limit faster. And if the array is unlimited or it can be unlimited, usually it's a red flag if, if you use the embedded approach because the array can grow indefinitely and basically you're gonna hit the limit at some point. No matter how big the limit is, is gonna you're gonna hit the limit at some point. So referencing works here best because you're just gonna have a small ID value and not the whole object inside. And then we have the many-to-many -many relationship and here the referencing approach is still preferred, but this can be referencing in both ways. So you can have a list of actors in the movie object, which is gonna be an ID of actor, and then the actor can also have a list of movie IDs stored in their object. And you're referencing both tables here, and this is very useful if your app needs to access the movies and then see all the actors for that movie, and also if you want to access the actors and all of their movies, from the other side of the data. I made a video a while ago about a side project that I was working on about the meal planner app, how we design the schema for a relational database. And now I'm gonna go through the same example and talk about how I'm going to design a document database schema designed for the same app. And you can compare how they're gonna be different. Cool, so I have the idea here. And basically this is a web app to create meals for each day of the week with ingredients for each meal and adjust the amount of the ingredients per meal and I can see the macros for that meal. Like a normal meal planner app, I want to be able to have meals and ingredients and I can plan the week ahead, for example, and add meals to the week and I can adjust the ingredients to make sure that I can hit my macros and every time. And then also the other feature that I want my app to have is to be able to produce a list of ingredients needed for the week ahead. So basically a grocery list that I need to go to the grocery store and buy them, basically. That's the idea. So I've also defined some data access patterns here because like I said, they are the most important when it comes to designing a document database schema. So I want to access all meals and see their macros. So probably I'm gonna probably have a list of meals where I can see, for example, chicken curry and then all of their ingredients. I've added here a column of feature, which is not really important uh, for the database schema design. And then when I'm creating a meal, I also want to be able to search for the ingredients so I can create a meal. I can add, for example, I want to be able to search for chicken. I want to be able to search for rice and just add them to a meal. And then the grocery list feature, I want to be able to extract all the ingredients for a certain amount of time and put them in a separate list where I can tick off when I, when I bought them. And I also want to be able to look at a day and see all the meals planned for that day and all of their macros and all of their macros. And I actually jump to designing the schema. Now I have three tables here already kind of defined. I have a grocery list with their ID, name, ingredient, if they're bought or not. And I have meals with the name, ID, name, description, time to cook. I need to add ingredients in there. And then I have the ingredients with all the data and all the macros information. Cool. So we know that ingredients consists of one ingredient and doesn't have anything inside it basically just have if ingredient is chicken then the name is gonna be chicken then the brand name and then their macros meals we know that the meals are consist of multiple ingredients so i do have ingredients here i haven't defined which approach i'm gonna use and if they're if they're gonna be a list or a list of ids or an embedded object and then i have the grocery list which is gonna be a separate table which is also gonna consist of ingredients and the amount of each of ingredients and the measurement for example two kilograms of chicken and if they're bought or not. So the relationships between a meal and ingredient can be one ingredient can belong to multiple meals. I'm probably gonna have multiple meals with chicken and rice and then one meal is gonna have multiple ingredients. So this is a many-to-many -many relationship and the amount of ingredients I'm gonna have is probably not gonna be too long but depending on the meal and the recipe I might have a list of 5, 10, 15, 20 ingredients 
Hopefully not more because I don't plan on cooking too much. But by definition, it is an indefinite growing list. And I'm not really sure what the limit is going to be. And the way that I want to access meals, I, I'm not really going to search for meals based on the ingredients. So if, whenever I look at the meals, I'm going to directly go and look at the list of meals or the meals for my for the days. For example, Monday, I have three meals. Tuesday, I have three meals and stuff like that. So. I'm not really gonna go with, to chicken and see all the meals based on chicken. So I can use the embedded approach here and just have the whole object of ingredients put into this meal document. I could use an array of referencing IDs. I will go with referencing IDs here. And the main reason is because I want to have one place where I'm storing the ingredients object. And for example, if I put the wrong calories for some brand that makes whatever rice i can change that in one place only it's going to update all of the meals i don't really want to have the same object in multiple places and that's my reasoning to have a referencing array of ingredients ids for meals i'm using a racer here by the way which is for relational database design so there's relationships visualizer here and all of that kind of stuff but doesn't really matter i'm just trying to showcase my thought process here and how i'm designing this schema the ingredients is going to be an array of strings. So this is going to be an array of strings. It's not going to be a foreign key because we don't have relationships in document databases. So it's just going to be an array of strings, which the, and the strings are going to be the ID of the ingredients. Be because I have a separate table for meals, I can then go in and look at all the meals. I can have a list of meals and I can make it searchable, like search by name or description and have a list of meals. So then I can use this to add them to the day. I don't have a table here for days, so let's write that up. So basically I can use go simple here and just define Monday to through Sunday. I don't really care about the dates, like what date is it on this Monday, but I will use basically a calendar here and be able to assign the meals to that day. So I can have a historic view as well of my meals and my meal plan for those days. So here I'm going to have a day. I can call it that day plan daily plan yes so this is gonna have id which is probably gonna be the primary key and then i'm gonna have a date which is gonna be a date of, of type date and then i'm gonna have meals one day can have multiple meals one meal can belong to multiple days so again i have a many to many relationship and here i can embed the meals in here the only other thing here is that the meals are going to differ from day to day. So if I'm going to use chicken and rice one day and I'm going to have different amounts of chicken and the rice, depending on my macros and how my weight fluctuates and whatever I want to achieve. So the amounts are going to change, but the, me the meals won't. So I think for that, the best way would be to have embed to use the embedded approach where I can add the ingredients amount for each meal. So basically it's, it's going to be kind of like creating a new meal for that daily plan. So if, if I'm going to have chicken and rice tomorrow, I can add 200 grams of chicken and 150 grams of rice. And then for dinner, I can have again, chicken and rice, but with different amounts. That's going to be two different objects in this, that, in this table where I can change the values and they're just going to keep staying there. I'm not going to affect all of the meals everywhere. So that's basically the object here. I can define the object as well which is going to be a meal in meals ingredient because it's a fusion of the meals, the name of the meal, the ingredients and the amount of ingredients, which I don't have anywhere here. I don't in the meals. I don't really have the amount of each ingredient. So I, I, I could actually add the ingredients here. I could make it with amounts. Yeah. So I'm going to define here a different structure. This is not going to be a table. Here is where the <laughs> relationship visualizer doesn't actually help. This is basically going to be the types for the object. Um, but in, in relational database, you don't really have embedded objects inside. So this is breaking the view. Um, high side, I probably should have used something else. Cool. So I've defined the object type and how the object is going to look for the meals table. And I have an embedded object here of ingredients. And this is basically the ingredient ID, the ingredient amount and measurement. So this is going to change per uh, meal. And now let's go back to our requirements data access patterns and see if this is going to satisfy those patterns. Here, uh, I want to be able to access all meals and see their macros. 
Now in this object, I don't actually have the ingredient macros and I need to calculate the macros based on the like 100 grams of chicken is this amount of calorie. And then I, in my meal, I've included 200 grams. So I need to calculate that and show it. And I don't have the macros here in this object, which raises some red flags for me because I'm going to need to grab the ingredients separately and then calculate the macros. In situations like this, I'm not actually sure of how much of an issue this is going to be. So I'm going to go like this and then whenever I work on this, if I start building this and I see that it's going to be an issue, then I can change it because the databases are that flexible because it might be an issue depending on how often I do this, but it might not. I just haven't gotten that far in the application yet. A searchable list of ingredients when creating meals. So whenever I have to create a meal, I'm going to search for ingredients. And I have a list of ingredients here so I can easily provide a searchable list of ingredients. Um, extract groceries. I haven't reached this part yet. And see the meal for each day. So I have a daily plan, which is going to have the date. I will also need a time of day. I'm going to do this as a stream because I usually eat three meals, uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So I'm going to just add the time of day here for the for this daily plan. I need to add that actually in the meals. So this is going to be an object of meal ID and time of day. And then each meal is going to have a separate time of day. And I said, it's going to be an embedded object actually. So it's going to be the meal object and the time of day. Yeah, this is how I'm going to do the daily plan. I can see for this date, what is the plan and I can satisfy this pattern. Cool. Now let's go to the groceries. I think that's the only one left. The grocery list, um, I'm going to have an ID here because I want to have multiple grocery lists and then I can have a historic view of grocery lists, but they're going to consist of ingredients and if it's bought and then the ingredient amount, but the ingredients here, I can, I don't really need the macros here. So I just need the ingredient name and the brand name and how much I need. So I'm going to actually have an ingredients list of objects. And I'm going to add this in here. So this is basically going to be embedded object, kind of, kind of modified object of ingredients because I don't actually need to reference it. And I don't need all the other information I have in, in here. I only need two things. And even if the brand name changes, I don't really care to have the up to date thing here because this is just going to be a grocery list I'm going to use once a week, basically to shop for my days. And, um, and then this is going to be created with a button. If I click a button, I, I'm going to choose a time frame like a week or three days, click the button and this is going to add all, all of those objects into the, into the grocery list table and I can tick off if it's bought or not. Actually, this is also going to be in here because I want to tick each ingredient if it's bought or not. So as you can see here, there's not really any rules when it comes to designing your dat document databases. The only thing that I, I'm going for is how I'm going to access the data and make sure that the schema design can actually support that. And you can actually change the objects as well. Like I did for the gross list. I don't really need everything. And that's why I love document databases. And I think that's why everyone uses them a lot. Like here I've defined four different tables, which might not be the most efficient way to do this. Uh, it's probably going to have costs associated with it. I also haven't really talked about GSIs and other stuff like that, but I'm going to define those uh, in the future. I'm actually working on a DynamoDB deep dive video where I'm going to be talking about all the things about DynamoDB, how it works and how you can use the most of it. But I'm actually not sure if I'm going to go for with document database. It's just an example. If I would, how I would design the schema for my project. I've basically started with relational database anyways. But yeah, I hope you've learned something. Hope this video was useful. Yeah, that's been it for this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Like 97% of my viewers are not subscribed. I would really appreciate it if people subscribe. I like the video if you liked it so the algorithm can show it to more people. That's been it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. Happy coding. Bye.